100 FM, The Pike. It's Bob and Zip with Worcester's Rock Station and the Rock Radio and FTQ Reunion. Uh, we have a couple of uh, notable broadcast personalities just entering the studio right now. Kevin Barbary, oh, man of a hello. thousand voices. And Dave Green. And, um, and what's interesting about you guys to me, of course, is not my era uh, that you were here that was when I was ditching Zip and <laughs> being completely oh, self-centered. Yeah, I was being completely <laughs> self-centered. Uh, but uh, but you're legendary to me, uh, Kevin. I'll start with you, especially for your um, incredible voice talent yeah. and uh, difficult personality. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I pretend to be other people. Yeah, my, my personality is just so difficult to deal with. I have to have others. Yeah. Uh, tell me about tell just tell us a little story about that and how you came into this. Worcester Radio stream of consciousness. Uh, so it just so happens I was working for a um, morning radio station in South Carolina, a rock station. We had the same consultant that consulted for WAF. At the time, Greg did not have a co-host. Greg Hill. Uh, he was Greg Hill, the Hill man. He had just come on in the mornings. He had a producer, and he had a, a woman that had just left that worked with him. And they were looking for somebody to fill that gap. And kind of do comedy and and you know be the sidekick. I hate that word, but it was a sidekick kind of thing. And the consultant recommended me, and then he said, "Hey, would you like to go try out in Boston?" Now I'd never moved anywhere. I had lived in South Carolina, North Carolina, Carolina, my whole yeah. life. And you you have the accent, but it's a soft. It's, it's a soft. soft. People usually a think I'm from California. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. If I get mad, I sound like Larry the Cable <laughs> That's right. Guy. So it's like, it's like y'all get out of here. <laughs> uh, so uh, they had me come up here for two weeks and do a show with Greg, and then um, uh, right after that, they hired me. And this was. Uh, a month before Cheers aired its final episode. So the first gig I had with Greg was we broadcast live from the I final episode. I was here episode. for that. So we overlapped that? a week or two, right? How about that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we were down at Cheers with Jay Leno and the whole... Mm. And that to me was like going from a small town radio... Well, not a small town, but a small town to celebrities everywhere and, yeah. and athletes everywhere. And uh, But uh, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a big move. It was a lot of fun. And I was there for 20 years. What's your favorite voice you've ever done? I know that's a stock question, but I have to know. Um, well, there's a difference between a favorite and the ones that people always request. Morgan so, Freeman? I mean, people always request <laughs> Morgan Freeman, whether it's 1993 or 2023, people always request Morgan Freeman. And then there's Donald Trump. And I got to tell you, a lot of people, let me tell you, a lot of people want to hear Donald Trump. You know, they used to work for W... I know Mr. WAF, he's a great person, his wife terrible. Uh, he's a great, great, great people, and we have a lot of people working for us here. It's going to be just absolutely wonderful. Charming, charming. And not political, too, which I love. Because uh, <laughs> if you do Donald Trump and you're political, you're like, ah, half the people are cut off. Yeah, just right down the middle. Just do the fun reality television show. Yeah, at least Joe Biden, listen, people, wear a mask. Come on, America. <laughs> we need to find some jobs. Kids need to buy cigarettes. Come on. Was, we got the radio we used to Listen to radio under the moonlight. Well, I mean, pizza was a moon cheese moment. This is, but now we got air. You know what I'm saying? Come on. <laughs> Tell me how you practice. I want to know this. Uh, I'm usually riding in the car. Okay. Um, I'll I'll <laughs> listen to uh, listen to somebody. Let's do a video of somebody if I can't get their voice down, and then I'll uh, I'll pick up on some nuance, um, and and go from there. And if I can't get it, sometimes the key to doing a voice, I've I hear somebody else do it, mm -hmm. and I'll pick it up on that. And that's happened a couple of times with people I should have been easy to do, but then I saw somebody else do it. I'm like, oh, that's how you do it. Um, so influences are always helpful. Um, yes. And maybe go a little deeper into the kind of mind you have. Um, I know a couple of voice actors, a couple of really good ones. And um, there's a, you have to be able to think in multiple personalities in a sense. You have to, you know, is it, you're a more empathetic person maybe, that you sort of feel how these people feel? Give me a little of the deep science behind it. Um, I guess you could kind of, I mean, I've never really thought about that. I guess it could be sort of like if you have a template for each person and you know, okay, I need to hit point A, point B, and point C if I'm going to do this impression so that people right away will go, oh, okay, I get it. So like Morgan Freeman is going to be narrating or sounding like he's narrating something. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is going to be talking about something without talking about something and mentioning people that don't exist. And contradicting himself. <laughs> That's right. It's a great place, terrible place. And, uh, <laughs> but so those, are the, so those are the hooks. It's kind of like a Mad Libs yeah, for, for famous the, people. Uh, and improv, they teach this kind of stuff. So those are the planned hooks that allow you to improvise. Because people, when you do it, by the way, people, even people like me, go, 
I have no idea how he's doing this. It's <laughs> coming out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but it is like playing a musical instrument. In a sense. Yes. Yes. Um, it, it's like playing a musical instrument if you're doing jazz, <laughs> where you're doing like the jazz improv. Yeah. What, what are you doing today? What's What's your gig now? Uh, so today, I actually, um, as far as voice work and radio oriented stuff, I do a lot of voiceovers from home. Um, I just got hired by a podcast network to uh, um, start ramping up to fill in for somebody who's retiring from a show they've been doing for 15 years. Mm. All they do is they read ghost stories or scary stories. It's like a huge show oh, of some kind. Yeah, no so I'm, uh, I'm doing that. And uh, the other show on that network is also almost like live radio plays where somebody narrates a story, but they also have the characters doing the interaction of the voices in the story. And, and those are both on the same network. One's called Chilling Tales, and the other one's called Scary Stories to Share in the Dark. Mm -hmm. um, outside that, I do just a, a lot of voice work, video yeah. games and things like mm -hmm. that from home. And uh, I'd always write comedy down. I just never have a place to it, put it in. Isn't it great that you're always <laughs> 10 seconds from the office with no commute? That is great. <laughs> That's the best that thing. Is great. And right. I also work for Amazon, which is a great company. So there you go. Wait a minute. You drive stuff to my house and deliver it? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> unfortunately, I, I'm the one that makes sure the person uh, takes the stuff and puts it where oh, okay, it's supposed yeah. to go, that takes it to yeah, you. You fire and hire those people. Like <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Kevin Barbary, everybody. And it, what an amazing skill. And uh, it's always been a pleasure to see your work and know what you're doing. Uh, we also have one of the most valuable kinds of radio players in the studio. Um, valuable. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to tell you, after after 42 years of mornings, um, I, I, what did you say? Swing? Swing. I, a swing guy. I was a swing, swing guy. guy. I, I call you guys also utility players because sure. you're ready to step into any role. Dave Breen, by the way. Let's say hi to Dave Breen. Breen. And, um, and as someone who's just getting an award for a whole bunch of work that everyone else did, <laughs> I must tell you. I appreciate all the help <laughs> producers and swing people and the people that keep the radio station going. So, uh, Dave, I don't know much of your story. That's all right. Uh, T tell I, I will me. stay. Uh, I will start with this: that you know, I called you guys uh, in 1985, requesting the Del Fuegos "Don't Run Wild." <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am still waiting for you <laughs> yes. to play that song. If We're waiting could. on your voice to change. <laughs> <laughs> See, and by the way, oh, did that, you guys work that, together? That, that kind of bullying oh, is what okay. swing guys take really well. <laughs> <laughs> and it's comic relief, and they know you're just playing. Yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah, very much it's, so. it's yeah. very much uh, no, I, appreciated. I, I, uh, I started at, at WAF in 1996. I was there 19 years, worked through 2015. So I... I think Kevin and I were talking about it. we were in like three or four buildings with the AAF. Yeah, and four we, different. Yeah, three or four different buildings. Yeah. I was there before Dave, but he was there after me, so he was still there after I had left. Mm -hmm. We've seen, we've seen. You know, pretty much like you guys know, you see everything. You you kind of so, close your eyes and you, you don't repeat that. Whatever happened there, you know. You were you were in uh, Cocaine Realty. Building? I was not. In, that was the one building I was. In. They just moved Norwich. to Westboro, so I was in uh, Westboro. Westboro, Norwich. Not no, Norwich. No, not not nope. Norwich. Okay. No. Westboro, oh, they moved a couple times in Boston, didn't they? One on one, yep. one okay. Huntington yeah. and then to Brighton Landing. Since and then, we since we have so the, much WAAF heritage, heritage here today, Dave, give me a little of your thought about that legendary radio station. You know, I and, and, and I joked about it when I got in here and I said, you know, I called you guys in 1985. <laughs> and honest to God, I called you guys in 1985 and I brought that up. <laughs> Because that's what we listened to. WAF was the station. I mean, I was born and raised in, in Norwood. I lived in Hopedale. And I remember being 15 years old. I don't want to age you guys right now, but I was 15 years old in 85. Too when I, yeah. It's too late. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I guess I'll leave now. That's the swing guy. I got to go. <laughs> you, know what's, you know what stuck with me? And I've, I've said this yeah. before, and it's, it, it, it's just the most amazing thing to think about. When they hired me at WAF, our program director at the time said to me, listen, you're going to have a great time working here. You'll never win the war. But you'll win little battles. Sure. But in the what end... What do you mean by the war? You mean... Radio. Beat war the, and radio. There was okay. a station they just thought couldn't be beat back then. Yeah. And they said, we're, we're never going to win the war, but yeah. we'll win a lot of little battles. Okay. But you know what? We did win the war. He, They took that station to a place where they knocked everybody out at the time Correct. Uh, that was a rock competitor. And... Uh, I think that was, you know, that still to this day is like, you know, good for them. But, but thinking you know, they would never do it, and they it, did. Yeah. It was great for us too back then because because we were that smaller station competing against that big Boston market station, if you will. And I remember they would bring music by, like, hey, you got a new CD coming out, a new album coming out, and they would hide it in a bush, you know, outside <laughs> the studio because they had to go to Boston to drop off the CD. 
But then they would call the the, the, the station and go, okay, if you walk out the third bush on the left, there's a CD <laughs> hidden in the corner. That's you know? good. That's and, a, so uh, you guys have it at the same exact time. That's a great prize pickup spot. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Wow. Uh, and, and and I also, so I know a little of this time, because uh, this after I left in Zip, the um, the you really did win. WAF did win the rock and roll position in Boston and held it for the remainder of a 50-year run, mm-hmm. which is just incredible. And um, it, um, it, of course, we're going to talk to uh, Mike Shue. We're going to get, you know, we're going to get some, some more modern history. But as that evolved, what were any key things that had to happen just right or special moments that made that continue? It was I, a lifestyle thing, wasn't it? I think it was. I think it was being the one station in town that wasn't playing all classic rock. Mm. We we sure. went. We were. We know we broke a lot of alternative and and yeah. the harder independent rock bands and things like that that nobody else was playing. And then we mixed some of the classic again, so we were drawing both audiences together, yeah. the younger people and the older people, and they were all like kind of melding there. And when some of those bands became huge, we got the credit for it, of course. <laughs> and yeah. and. Uh, Early on at AAF, by the way, this uh, maybe precedes you, but the uh, the button that was created said "crank it up," and AAF always had that edge. It had that mm-hmm. edge, not just in its personalities, but in its music. And you, I think you're right. I think having that edge in Boston, as things probably corporate rocked out in some yeah. places, <laughs> probably you know, helped. You know what changed when we uh, we moved to, I think it was Brighton, and all of a sudden we needed our badge just to go to the bathroom. You know, we couldn't get back in the studio without our badge, <laughs> oh, the scan yeah. badge. You know, you knew things had changed dramatically at that stage in your yeah. career. Yeah, and I think we were the only station, because we had that rock audience, we were the only station that, that had more of the edgy um sure. jocks at the time and stuff stuff that would never really fly now oh but yeah i can't yeah. even imagine any of this I, stuff I, I've we've been, been canceled can- i've i've been reminiscing myself being canceled <laughs> 10 times in the last week yeah you're all walking around in women's underwear we're probably got you canceled uh, yeah. <laughs> I, let me tell you something about that song uh maybe the second most popular twisted christmas song and i and i, and I told bob this story this morning when we were putting together twisted christmas i was looking at whether we would get sued because there was this guy, Weird Al Yankovic, and he would get permissions, you know, from Madonna to do like a surgeon or something like a yeah, sturgeon yeah. or whatever. <laughs> anyway, and, and I wanted to use songs that had no known author or were traditional to try and make a Christmas album. Okay. So I was reminiscing earlier today, walking across Worcester Commons to go to the Worcester Public Library to go into the sheet music section. Oh, my goodness. And pull out all these Christmas songs. And I found all of the ones, 12 Paints of Christmas, I found all of the songs that we could do without risking anything. And that was the start of that. When Women's Underwear came out, it was one of the ones I discovered that day. It didn't make it to the second album. When Walking Around in Women's Underwear came out, it was Rush Limbaugh's favorite song. Oh, boy. And he played it constantly. And I and I was I, I always thought, well, it must it must be a unifying song in some way. <laughs> <laughs> so now, how did you cover the um, uh, "I Am Santa Claus"? Uh, uh, I Am Santa the... Claus was with Ozzy's permission. Actually. Okay. Uh, uh, and by then, by the way, uh, there had been a uh, there had been a change in law. There was a Supreme Court ruling that made parody okay if you only took a certain portion of the song and you weren't directly competing with it. So on later albums. Huh. We were able to do everything. All right. Awesome! Thank you for reminding me we of that. We don't have to take a we don't <laughs> yeah. have to take a full commercial break here. We just got to get the ID. And if you want to give the ID, Bob, let's or... tell people what they're listening to. <laughs> we, we could just say WWFX Southbridge Worcester. There, we're all set. We can okay. keep, keep going with the show. <laughs> I feel like I need a break. <laughs> <laughs> you need a break? No, no, it's funny. Right. Uh, there was there was a time with radio jingles where you know. Uh, Radio stations would not want you to know that they were licensed to some little city. It might apply a little to uh, WAF mm-hmm. at one point. Sure. And uh, um, and I remember we we made the jingle. You know, everything was about Boston, Boston, Boston. And, and by the way, there was a little resentment amongst some Worcesterites. Oh yeah, you remember that? They, absolutely. They did not like that. Why don't you guys acknowledge? You know, we're like your number one town and we're the biggest small town in the da- in the state. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and, and and, of course, business-wise, if you want your radio station 
to keep doing stuff like Sky Blast and bring it in the Rolling Stones. You want it to be successful. So it was a, a successful mm -hmm. move. But I remember there was a there's a period of time, and in many radio stations did this, where they would have a big top of the hour ID like Chuck just did. WAF! Uh, WAF! Boston. <laughs> Boston. Like the Boston. FedEx guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could barely hear it. Uh, but everybody knew. I'm mean, always a beautiful spot. All right. Um, shall we invite another guest? Oh my Karen goodness. Karen Grace. Oh Karen God. Grace. Oh. Uh, let me, we'll go, get go get her. Yeah, it'll take a little time. So just it, a thought. Just it, a thought. This is Bob again. So yeah. when we talk about BCN and, and how much we competed against them when we were there, it's funny when, when BCN finally folded their tent and AF was still around, AF's ratings actually went down. And I thought to myself, how could this be? All these, you know all these rock and rollers uh, who listen, now we should get them. And I always thought, this is my theory, that Peter Pan isn't as cool without Captain Hook. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that, right. that, that, com yeah. that competitive hatred that we mm. sometimes had with that radio station and them with us, that it raised the boats higher, the yeah. two of us yeah. competing with each other. And without one, yeah, we, got, it was a, it was different. I got to tell you, um, Charles Laguadera is one of my best Facebook friends, and he, oh, I think he's eighty two or something now. I mean, he is still actively engaged with his listeners every day, and uh, and still quite left wing, by the way. Just in case you were wondering, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, he was like one of my idols growing up here because. Uh, not because I want to do the same show he did, but because his he was so authentic, and so having great competition to your point, yeah, yeah it makes everybody better. All right, mm -hmm. thank you, Dave. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, we're gonna it. thank you. We're gonna bring on uh, our first midday host when we worked here. All right, oh. K Karen. Hi. Yeah, you want some headphones? Sure. <laughs> Let's visit on the radio. Um, what do you mean? I, yeah. uh, uh, hello. Hi. Wow. So let me I, I, let me give a. I don't know a lot of Karen Grace history because I don't didn't know you before we worked together. So tell me a little bit about your origins in radio and how we came together at AAF. Oh my gosh! You know, I never thought about. You still have a gorgeous voice, by the way. I'm sorry I interrupted so quickly. Thank you. <laughs> I started, I never thought about doing radio ever in my whole entire life. I was in a terrible administrative secretarial job, and I saw an ad to um, take over to help run the okay. WAAF Volkswagen Beetle campaign. You started as support, too. And Steve Stockman yeah. was the one that hired me. And so I helped you and Bob, you know, just like helped with the drivers, helped get things, you know, the decals on the on the cars and was doing all the advertising and the marketing. And it was really interesting and fun because I'd never been in a radio station. And frankly, my background was jazz dance mm. and Broadway tunes. And I was listening to, you know, Wayne Shorter and a, a lot of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> A lot, a lot that had to do. So it was, with, it was culture shock. It was complete culture shock. Yeah. Then David Bernstein walked into the uh, office one day and he said, "Karen, what do you think about going on the air?" He literally he could hear your voice. Asked me if yeah. I'd like to be a radio jock, and I'm like, "Well, you know, most people would be like leaping to the ceiling and stuck there." And I was like, "Well, I don't really know. You know, I'm not sure I know all that much about rock and roll." I had to basically go back to school for it because, sure, I knew who Led Zeppelin was and I knew the Rolling Stones, but I was no music aficionado of classic rock and roll. That's for darn sure. And back then, mm -hmm. to do middays and to play the tunes, you were expected to actually be into them and talk about them. Oh, yeah, yeah. and I did Yeah, because yeah. I learned fast. <laughs> I realized that I had a real opportunity, and that's how I learned. And uh, we started out in the Cocaine Realty Building, John Cocaine. Did you have to learn about cocaine or did you did, did take no, that was an elective course? I I, that was a course. <laughs> yeah. I was really successful with that. Yeah. Um, and I, and then kind of like we pushed that one aside. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good what a heaven. strange time, though. You know, it John was, Belushi, all of that stuff. It, it was, was just fun. strange. And then I remember, of course, when when uh, we moved, uh, we moved 
or the building around the corner. Then, I, of course, I remember the Bob and Zip morning show. That was, you know, the big deal. And I, I, I got to come on after Bob and Zip, and I was um, then I was Karen Grace, 10 to 3, like Chuck is doing now. And uh, I was doing the electric lunch. Yeah. And that's when I would take calls from listeners, and I would spin records records yeah oh they were on t- they were of course we weren't cds yet we were on records. No. And, and you hosted live wire didn't you too? I the did. public affairs yeah. thing yeah. which i, I think did. you yep that was a sweet spot for you too. it was because i met a lot of really interesting people i got to do a lot of really interesting things for animals i got to work for for you know the jimmy fund and i did the pan mass challenge and then I raised money for uh, Live Aid, and I was able to go to that concert, and I was able to broadcast live from there and bring back audio from that. And I had, uh, and then of course my most famous classic uh, promotion, I guess, was the day that it was National Nudity Day, and I didn't tell the program director. I just said, "Hey, I guess what? I'm going to give ten albums and a WAAF T-shirt to the first person that walks into the station." <laughs> Nude. With nothing but a bumper sticker on. Wow. Uh-huh. And sure enough, it took about 40 minutes, and the first guy walked in, and he was covered, and he got his album. It was legal. <laughs> Fairly legal. And we got yeah. a lot of exposure for that. That's awesome. The Worcester exposure. Telegram and <laughs> that. So there you go. Right. And then, of course, I remember all your, you know, all the stuff that you Crazy. did with the... Oh. the Parodies, twisted tunes, and you know we were we quick were second before because pretty soon we're going to have Harvey Warfield on the phone here. Get out! Uh, so we will literally have morning, middays, and afternoons, right? <laughs> yes. Well, actually, and there were other people in those shifts at, at times, but uh, I remember my Karen Grace memories uh, include lots of live performances, seeing bands that were exploding at the time. Uh, seeing Joan Jett is one night I remember. We all went oh, to Joan Jett. Yeah. And, and I Love Rock and Roll had just come out. Not like now. It's been a little overplayed. <laughs> 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 but it was one of those songs that when you heard I Love Rock and Roll, you didn't say, that's a new song. You said, that's a monster. And then when you see Joan Jett in her, she still performs amazing, but in her prime doing that, these were cultural events and, and this kept happening in Worcester. All the major concerts happened in Worcester because it's in the center of Massachusetts. You right. can draw the most people. Exactly. Yeah. We saw everybody. And I, re- I partied with Joan Jett before she went on live. Now, I was, oh, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that girl could party. <laughs> she was well, amazing. When you join a group called the Runaways, I mean, yeah, you know. Yeah, you, you, you're gone. You're, I mean, there was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Thank God I got to interview him before he passed away. I got to see him drunk. I got to see him sober. It was, and I got to see him twice, and that was really that was an amazing thing. Bob Seger, for heaven's sakes, Ted Nugent, Duango De Tango. I th- that was the first concert I saw as a WAAF DJ, and when Duango De Tango came mm-hmm. on with Dwayne Nugent, I thought, what the hell have I done? <laughs> have, I, have I joined the right radio station? <laughs> Duango De Tango. Hey man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, th- I mean, there were just, and then you know the Stones. Uh, of course, Absolutely. the Stones is the uh, the ultimate of all time. So, um, what what else can you say? It's to me, it's crank it up still. Yeah. Did you drink that night that David Lee Roth came over and made everybody laters? Do you remember what the later was? No. Uh, there was a, bo- a bunch of leftover uh, bottles of alcohol, and he just mixed them all together. Oh no! And made everybody a big drink, and he said, "This is a later because once you drink this." <laughs> Later. And, I'm sure. And then that happened inside the building. It was just crazy stuff. Well, that I missed. Because <laughs> it probably would have been never again. Well, you had to get up at, yeah, you had to get up at 9 a.m. So, yeah. all right. Karen Grace. Do we have Harvey? Oh, my God. I can't believe it. You know, it, one, one of the honors of being on WAAF was that Harvey Warfield was your bookend in the afternoon. <laughs> One of the <laughs> coolest voices ever on the radio. Great attitude, fun, and uh, some wonderful catchphrases. And Harvey, I think this may be the first time we talked because we never even saw each other back then. I think you're absolutely correct. Yeah. Um, I have to tell you something. I can't make it tonight. I'm sick. I'm about ready to puke on someone, and I didn't want to do it in public. Uh, 
sound effects yeah. on the radio are fine, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear Suppose that. Public service. No, yeah. no, no. I'm sicker than a dog. I don't know. I don't. Hi, Karen. Grace, Karen. The the story that I remember with you was the time you interviewed Clarence Clemens. And you had your snow boots on. Yes. And and they and they gave you a little bit of height. But when you stood up and he was standing up, it was like uh, <laughs> the guy almost hit the ceiling. Remember, remember that? Remember I do. Your interview with Clarence I do remember oh. that, and I remember those boots, and I remember he signed my boots, and they That's I wore was, them forever, you. every single day. That's so That's so what funny. He did. He signed your boots. Yeah, and that just memory just stands out in my in my in my head. But oh. of course, uh, you know, I need to be watched closely. But um, anyway, but yeah, 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 that was great. Oh, that Sarah, was... nice, nice to hear your voice again. Thank you so much, and yourself as well. I'm sorry that you're ready to puke, but you know, <laughs> if it makes yeah, you no, feel well, any better, I, I, my I, back I, is killing me <laughs> because I just had back surgery. So don't feel bad. Oh no. Coming up, legendary broadcasters talk about their current medical issues. Oh That's God, the next no, break. No, please, let's not. I'll take over the whole show. <laughs> anyway, your, your malady is worse than mine, but uh, mine is messier. Yeah, uh, I, I just hope it doesn't have anything to do with COVID. So there you no, go. No, no. Well, I'm just speaking of that, okay, yeah, I, I got like three or four shots three weeks ago. Uh, what did I get? I got I got a I got a, I got the current COVID shot 20, 2023 version. I got a twenty twenty three flu uh, uh, quadrivalent. That's for geezers. Yay! Mm-hmm. Raising my hand. Right. Um, another one I got was an RSV shot, also for geezers. And oh, another one for geezers. A <laughs> shingrex. Did he say Jesus or geezers? They sound the same. Yeah. So you don't get shingles. Oh, well, I was no. just going to ask you about go that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you about it. And you have to go back for another. I have to go back in December for another <laughs> shot of Shingrax. Sure. Uh, Give me a break. Harvey, would, are there um, any creams you'd like to recommend? Because we can get some endorsement deals. No. No. <laughs> mercifully. All right. Mercifully, look. I don't have to apply any creams. All right, Harvey. Yay. I, I know this is funny because I, I was like, it'd be hard to talk to Harvey because he he's going to steamroll. And and, and I, I would I would love to ask you a, just a few questions about your origin because when I got to WAF, you were the big mm-hmm. star in the afternoon. Oh yeah, and I got to be the interim. I was the fill in interim. You're really not good enough. We're really trying to hard find somebody else. That was like six months, and then they were like, "We can't find anybody else." And so I got the job. But but you were uh, just huge afternoon star, and with such a cool attitude. Tell me a little bit about your origin, where that enthusiasm for radio came from. I just didn't know any better. I, that that must be it. You know, I, I, I guess I was at AAF twice, once in seventy five for two months, and then. My second time, seventy nine to eighty two, right? Mm. And I'm I'm bummed that I'm not going to be at the thing tonight to see people um, that I used to work with, or it, the whole. The, it sucks to do that, but mm. I, I figured it would be better than puking on someone inadvertently, don't you think? I think the more we mention that, the happier they'll be that you're not there. That's good. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. Anyway, I just want to say that I get the name uh, hard. Yeah. Your, uh, that your knowledge also of rock and roll and your whole persona was so respected and so mm. loved by the fans because you really mm. did. You really brought it for WAAF. Well, I, you really I did. Lived it. Yeah, I kind of lived the job, which, you know, I mean, I, I wore shades. They weren't supposed to be shades. They were just transition lenses that were supposed to get darker in the sun and go back to regular. Right. In, you know, but they never did. And so I was like, cool, with my sunglasses yeah. on. Oh, and, my God. And was, by the way, you, you you had a look, Harvey, that was just a great caricature. And and maybe it wasn't a caricature. But it, but it, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, uh, it's sort of like... It's sort of like not not semi homeless, but semi you know ragged, um, <laughs> and, and and courageous with your hair, and 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 oh. it, it was it was the kind of thing where you know a rock star would look like that, and then maybe they'd get home and take off the wig and they'd look like a normal person. I don't know. I'm curious. Yeah. Do you still have that know. now? What do you look like today? No, 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 no. I, there, there is a picture on my 
uh, the Facebook thing. I'm under the name okay. of Bill Hathaway. Bill, ha- good, look up Bill Hathaway. <laughs> Just let us all in, Bill Hathaway. You're getting a friend request. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. And right. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah. but, but no, no, I, no more, no more long hair and everything. It's pure white and I have a, a beard and a goatee. So yeah. there you are. That's what I look like now. But so I don't look as hip as I did on the radio. But how did I get the name Harvey? I got it by mis- well, not by mistake, but I got it and I didn't like it in the beginning and that was at vbf my first rock radio mm, station right. and and uh and the program director comes by and he says okay i've got the name for h because i was h william warfield oh, <laughs> good heavens. Anyway. sounds like right? you're in the okay. senate for heaven's sake <laughs> well yeah i you it was a news name that i used out in missouri when i got out of the air force anyway so 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 we took the william out and he said, I'll play around with the H because there was another guy on the air, J. William Charles. So J. William Charles and H. William Warfield, what, are they married? What's going on here, you know? You, you know, that kind of thing. So so he comes back to me, and he goes, I've got it, I've got it. And I said, okay. He said, are you sitting down? And I said, yes. Okay. He goes, Harvey. Oh, would you I just said, say Harvey by it? itself? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. No. Yeah, I said, Harvey? Hard, Harvey Warfield. Well, no, you can use your last name, Warfield. I said, but Harvey doesn't sound very rock and roll, for God's sake. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, so he said, look, use it for a couple of weeks. Use it for a couple of weeks. If you don't like, we'll come up with something else. <laughs> I'm uh, sure. I'm Just like so they glad. switched Darren's so on Bewitched without telling you. He didn't come you. up with something like Hector or something like that. But anyway, so it stuck with me. Anyway, yeah. so that, that, Harvey, that's how I, got the name I mean, Harvey. with a name like Karen Grace, everybody thinks I worked at a Christian station. Yeah. Honest that's to goodness. True. And, it's, and so you right. can't, you know. You I, were rock and roll. Darling, yeah, you yeah, were rock and roll. Yeah, I was, but Karen I called Grace, you Karen Full of Grace. Actually. Karen Full of Grace. Yeah, right. they call me Karen. Oh, they call me lots of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God, Harvey! But, is... I'm, but I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss seeing everybody. Like, like, oh, yeah. who, I, I was gonna miss. I'm gonna miss seeing. I've got the names written down here: Lorraine Le Duke and Lois Del Chia, uh, 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 Cliff Blake, of course, and, and uh, 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 Jeff Berlin. Je- do you, Fear. Karen? Do you remember Fear. what Jeff yeah. Berlin's nickname was? No. Mm. I the should. baby blaster. Remember, remember, Jeremy yes. was there. Jeremy Savage. Was ah, there, yes. right? Yes. And Jeremy was the master blaster, and Jeff Berlin was just new into radio, into commercial radio, and so he became the baby blaster. Well, you know what? <laughs> he has a very boyish look to him, and he's right outside. He's still in the boyish, lobby, too, and he right? still yeah. looks. Yeah. He look. He still looks like he's twenty five. Yeah. You know. Well, you tell you say hello to the baby blaster from Harvey. Okay, I, I will. I will do that. <laughs> Harvey oh Warfield trying not to fall in or puke on you tonight. That's right. And uh, That's Harvey, right. it's such a pleasure to have you right here. Uh, thank you so much at One Hundred FM, the Pike Worcester's Rock Station, Rock My Radio pleasure. Reunion. My great reunion, right? Yes. Ready? Here we go. Two guys that have known each other.